Sundo ken bali na mi mi bado na kupenda Tamoni ona we we ni pula I'm right here in Uganda's capital Kampala and it's amazing and guess who I met this time round on the show? I'm hanging out with the songstress, the song but the diva is Africa's favorite singer and actress, Juliana Kanyomozi. Yes, Juliana Kanyomozi. Vana, yeah, this show is going.
introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Juliana, Juliana Kanyomozi. Some people call me Judge Juliana, especially in Kenya. But uh, my full name is Juliana Kanyomozi. My stage name is Juliana. I am um, a Ugandan. I uh, grew up in Uganda. Um, I'm a musician, um, actress sometimes. Um, I mean, I do a lot of things, but yeah, mostly people know me for being a singer. What, what about your parents? How did they receive this whole singing, you know, idea? Because you recorded your first album at 20. Yeah, first, first song at 20. Your first song. Uh -huh. um, my mom was very protective. My dad was very supportive. <laughs> yeah. So they were you were a daddy's girl? At the opposite end. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I was daddy's girl. You. I was uh -huh. daddy's favorite. Um, mom was being mom. Uh, mothers, we tend to be very protective of our children. More than the fathers. Not that yeah. they don't love their kids, but uh -huh. mothers are more because of the, you know, the connection. So my mom was like, no, 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 you can't be going out there. Oh, my God. And then daddy, on the other hand, was like, no, man, this, this is good. And this is what she loves. She has the voice. Let her go. Um, I was lucky that I had my brother. You know, is like it the to elder be or the younger, uh, older brother? Oh. Mm. So he was sort of like my protection. You know, I would go with him if I had to perform somewhere. And so my dad felt that no, she's safe. I mean, she's got Eddie with her at all times. And he'd always tell me, once you're done performing, you come back straight at home. I'm like, yes. So that's how it started. You'll mm -hmm. tell me about Eddie later on. Yeah. But I'm interested so much to know how you grew up, where you went to school to. Your English is amazing. Where did really? you go to school to? Yeah. yeah. I went to, I changed secondary school a few times, but for the most part, the secondary school that shaped me was called Namasagali College. I went there in uh, senior two, I believe. Because I'd been in senior two in a previous school, so I repeated it in that school, and then I was there for the rest of the of my high school. I, I thought you perhaps went to you know Britain or somewhere out no. of the country. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But but that that is a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. I, it, it could be um, the people I was exposed to, my friends. Um, I mean. I, I had a lot of friends who spoke good English, but yeah. even the school we were in, Namasagali, he was um, he was British. Uh, first of all, he is British. He's not there anymore. Yeah. So um, spoken English was important to him. And uh, talking about home, mm. you remind me that uh, you're still a new mom. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about so Taj and your baby. <laughs> you know his oh. name. <laughs> yeah. Taj is fine. Uh -huh. He's growing very fast. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's a lovely, lovely boy. Time flies. Uh, time flies. Really does. Um, I had him right in the middle of COVID. COVID, COVID baby. Oh my God. It was a... Hey, how was that a, experience? How was that experience? Eh, 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 eh. It was... Um, COVID found me in Canada. <laughs> Canada is your third home. Yes. Yes. You could say. <laughs> you could say. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had Taj there. Uh, and then we, we were stuck there for, <laughs> for, for a year. Yeah. It was uh, quite challenging because, I mean, the, the whole world had locked down. Uh, we didn't know what was coming next. Um, my hospital visits, I still remember walking into the hospital and it looked like a ghost house. Yeah. Because, I mean, there were no people. It was dead, you know, apart from just the doctors. Because, you know, during COVID, if you remember, mm -hmm. there were people who were still allowed to go to hospitals, especially if it was they were calling something them. that couldn't that, that couldn't wait. There's yes. a name they called they, them. There's a name they were calling them. But I remember me being pregnant, I had to keep going and it was so scary there were no patients in the hospital even some of the doctors wouldn't come you would only go if you had a patient to treat to treat yeah you it's know? an emergency sort mm -hmm. of yeah mm -hmm. but um it was quite an experience i think it taught me how strong i can be in a situation like that yeah. where you don't know what's next i mean it's never happened to the world so we're all i'm sure we're all learning yeah, yeah. like what happens next does the world lock down forever 
So did you get pregnant when you're still here? Yes. Or it mm. caught you in it, Canada? It, no, no, no. I was, uh, I'd actually just arrived when COVID um, started spreading. Two, three weeks in, COVID started making news. COVID started spreading. Yeah, I was about five months pregnant, four or five months. You know, there's something about women, Juliana. Mm. Besides you being a singer and a celebrity, yeah. you know, there's something about women. Yeah. Sometimes you have to plan how many babies you want mm. in your head mm. at some point. Mm. Yeah. So was Taj a plan for you? Taj was, yes. Taj was um, a baby I wanted to have. And so, yes. Why, why, why did you want to have that? I wanted to be a mother again. Yeah. For those oh. who know my story, I wanted to be a mother it's again. So I wanted to be a mother uh, again. So yeah. bad. Um, but it took me time to get to that place. Yeah. Yes. It took me a good four years to get to that place where I could, I could open myself up to the idea of getting pregnant again. Yeah. The, I know. The, the trauma of, you I know, know loss yeah, and yeah. affected me a lot. But, uh, yeah, I knew I wanted to be a mother again. And, uh, when that time came and I felt that I, that I was ready, let, let's talk about you. It's been a while and it's been ages yes. since you are publicly in Kenya, if you recall what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, but perhaps before I get to that, I'm so interested to learn and, uh, you know, get to know more about the Kiroga Foundation. So, the tell Karen me, yes, Foundation? Yes, 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 the Karen Foundation. Uh, tell it, me about it. We, we started the foundation in 2015, I believe. Yeah. Um, it was uh, started in memory of my son, who was called Karen Kavugo. Karen passed away in 2014, and um, the foundation was uh, an inspiration of something that he was very passionate about, and that was helping children. He was a very kind young man. In terms of, you know, when I grow up, mom, I want to uh, help children, I want to give them a home them oh, toys so and yeah, he was very very big on that so when he passed I, I asked myself what's the best way to celebrate my son and keep him alive forever and so we came up with the foundation I know you've spoken about that before yeah but perhaps to me it will be the first time you're talking to me about it mm. and uh, the viewers but what really happened how did we lose him Karen um, had asthma from the time he was young and so he got an attack, just a normal attack like, you know, he had had so many attacks, we were even used to, we knew how to treat him, yeah. it was yeah. the normal stuff, nebulized and all those other things. But this one was different, this one was different, it was aggressive and um, so I, I got a call from his teacher at school. I said, please come to school. Karen has had an attack. He was playing soccer. He loved soccer. He was a good soccer player. So he was in the field. He was playing soccer. And that's when he got an attack. I remember the day the weather was not good. It was very cold. And um, so I rushed there, picked him up, and uh, things happened so fast. So we ended up in hospital. And he just got it. He just got worse, and uh, we moved him to Nairobi to Aga Khan Hospital, and um, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Yeah. It happened so fast. It was like a bad dream, you know, and it didn't make sense at all. I'm so sorry. That was a little silence for him. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. The one thing I learned during that time is that nobody can understand your pain unless they've been through it. Like they cannot get it. So someone will make a comment and while it's very insensitive, yes. it's also innocent in some way because they have they no idea know. what they're even saying. I experienced that a lot. Um, it was also interesting to see that people move on very fast. You, 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 I would sit in my house and I'd look at everyone out there 
and you know the world has moved on. Yeah. The world has moved on. Yeah. And I haven't, you know, that was tough. So how is it that everyone has moved on? Yeah, so that was interesting because people kept asking me, when are you coming back on stage? And I'm like, can't they see? Don't they get they it? They can't see you, you, you know? know? But they don't. They couldn't understand because they, they don't know what I was going through. So that's a challenge when you're going through loss and you're a public figure, you know? It's, you have to um, separate yourself from that life and first take care of you. you know? And I made that decision, it was tough. And I said, you know what, I'll get back when I'm ready, no matter what. And to surprise people still, you know, have so much memories, they love you. Mm -hmm. And I saw you perform, you are bare feet. Girl, <laughs> you're a diva. <laughs> Tell me about it. No, it's expecting I, to see you in heels, you know. I don't take it for granted. Yeah. Man. I've had, my fans have been with me all these years. I've seen people come and go. So to come back and do, a concert without new music, out, uh, having been out of the limelight for more than four or five years and, and the, the venue literally sells out even before the concert. Really humbled me. Yeah, it gets me to appreciate really what God has blessed me with. It's, it's not something I take for granted. It's not something you can buy with money. It's just favor. Mm. You're loved. E ci intuzioni no voci vuluga, e ci mala ne ci guao, oro no papa, ne vuoi giù santi singanna ci faco, quenzi giù chi rebi serebio, a mazigane cagnungu ca, quando gioca gioca gno, nanghe si ricutira, se na questo ogni uane mala. I, I missed being on stage. My God, I really did. I, and I guess um, it's partly why I decided to come back with a concert. Apart from wanting to see my fans, uh, you know, in person. I missed it. I missed it. I missed that. There's something about being on stage and singing for your fans. Yeah. And Music for me is like therapy. So when I'm on stage performing and when I'm in studio recording, I literally forget all my problems. It's like I'm high on music. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's something I keep telling um, those who want to, you know, become, you know, do what I do. Yeah. Do it because you love it. Because when you do that, it will be so easy. It ceases to be like a job, you know. There is only one Juliana Fernandez. There can't be another. Of course. So you're writing your story. Like there can't be another pastel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm thinking about before you do an autobiography, mm. Juliana, mm. could you be candid and fair to me? Mm. And just tell me about the sad and the sad things. Okay, I didn't Just see that coming. Yeah, you are Just so... <laughs> no, no, no. Um, here's what I do. Um, and again, this, this, this is a lesson I've learned over time. Possible. You know, with the time I've been in, the, in showbiz. In the and in, yeah. I've learned that you have so much more peace when you selfishly keep certain slices of your life to yourself. As long as, like for example, I don't feel like I owe the public owe an explanation about my private no, life. No, you don't. I owe them an explanation if I haven't released an EP in five years. I do. So yeah, um, all I can tell you is, is I'm in a very happy place right now. And um, I couldn't be more grateful. And uh, I'm just where I am. Sing for me one of your best songs. Oh my God, you're not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite is Sanyu Liange. You didn't put me on the spot but, like that. Yes. Uh, what can I sing for you? I love all my songs. I can't say that, you know, I love one particular one more than the other. They're all my babies. Um, 
But I'll sing Kanyembe, and that's because of the meaning. Kanyembe is a gospel song. It was one of the first songs I did, but it was very deep because of the meaning behind it. Um, like I said, it's a gospel song. Kanyembe, nyimu seri nyalio yesu mukama Watoli zenandi vadentia nabino Yunamu kame vinuma ho vituale Abalave bange panzije kolo kongolo Oh, you're still that vocalist. <laughs> now, one final one yeah. for this Kenyan mm. who is so crazy about your tune and Bushoke. You remember it? Yes. Please do it. Oh my God. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You just put me on the spot. Okay. Uh, I haven't sang it in a while. <laughs> Ibadona kupenda usindoke mbali nami Ibadona kupenda usiende mbali nami Hey yeah yeah usindoke mbali nami Ibadona you will literally <laughs> fire me when... <laughs> You did well No no you did well <laughs> Thank you so much for your time <laughs> However the last bit. Yes. Why do you think of doing music in your local dialect? Yeah. Because I understand like 95 of your songs. 95%. Yes. yes. 95% of your music is in Luganda, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why that when you have quite a wide fan base, you know, people are in Swahili, English and all of that. Why Luganda? I think it just comes naturally because I'm Ugandan and um, I also know that our fans in Uganda are very, very passionate about their language which is why when I started out I was doing English and it the reception was lukewarm and then when I switched to Luganda it was like magic you are there darling literally so that's when I knew that okay when I'm singing for Ugandans what they want to hear first is what they connect with the most but that doesn't mean that my other songs are not successful. Like when I sing Usiende, the crowd still goes wild. When I sing Woman, the crowd sings along. So uh, what that tells you is that music is music, regardless of what language you sing. It's, it's just music. Today I'm going to get the local insects, grasshoppers, literally. Go buy them, cook them, and eat them. I'll share with you. <laughs> and this is grasshopper. You know, it's still walking. There is no way I could have left Uganda before experiencing one of their delicacies, Nsenene. Nsenene are edible grasshoppers which are either boiled or deep fried and ready to eat, usually sold to commuters. Very nice and you don't need oil, it is in hey, inclusive. <laughs> get onion and salt. Yes. Yeah. For breakfast. You can eat it with the kosher. Yeah, you can eat with kosher, you can eat it with rice, you can eat it with rice. That is enough. Manange, don't feel the cup. <laughs> you can't test you see. She will tell you, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. You're sure it is sweet? It's very sweet. You will taste it, you will see. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you again. We leave Kampala after a few days of great experience and learning. Which country and city would you like us to come to next? Let us know. So make sure you join us again next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Kenyan time only on KTN News as I bring you more and more amazing stories from across the globe. If you have a story you'd like to share with the world, as I usually say, 
please write to us through Globe Traction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at Globe Traction or at KTN News KE. And tap that follow button to me on my social media handles at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for more of behind the scenes. See you again soon as I'll be in a different city and country.